For our final project, we decided to execute a brute force attack to obtain PMK IDs to get into Wi-Fi networks that we do not have the password for. I'm Nick Coleman. I'm Tian Fong. I'm Nor al Dean Hamed. I'm Nahum Vekasa. Before we tell you how to execute this attack, I'm going to discuss some of the background involved in Wi-Fi networks and Wi-Fi roaming. So home Wi-Fi networks use a protocol called WPAPSK, and that involves a password that is known to us and remembered by us. So a technology that enables this kind of attack is network roaming. And um, network roaming is whenever a device disconnects from a weaker Wi-Fi network and connects to a stronger Wi-Fi network. So what so um, involved in that process is first a discovery phase where the client would probe available networks and access the strongest available one. Next would be the auth authentication phase where the device um, figures out if it's allowed into the network. The, um, it would send an authentication request to the AP and the AP would respond with authentication frames with a decision if it's allowed in. And then comes the association phase. If approved, the client would send an association request with the security capabilities like encryption. And then the AP would respond with something called an EAPOL frame. And in that frame is a, cru a crucial piece of data, the PMK ID. So the PMK ID provides a, a um, unique vulnerability. It's the pairwise master key. And if we obtain that PMK ID, we could get the PMK, which is the Wi-Fi password. So um, to enable faster roaming, the PMK ID is cached on APs. And um, if we find a network that's supported, the, P the EAPOL frame would return that PMK ID. So this is the main idea of this attack is to obtain the PMK ID. And then we can brute force guess to obtain the Wi-Fi password. So to successfully coordinate this attack, we need uh, two hardware and four software tools. So the first hardware tool is a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pis are small affordable computers, mainly used in educational settings and for personal projects. We need to, uh, we, to use them, we first need to connect them to a monitor and make the laptop using the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And then they just, uh, just use them like as like regular laptops or desktops. The Alpha Long Range Wireless USB adapter was specifically chosen for this attack because it has a monitor mode support. That's why we picked this uh, Wi Fi adapter. Cali uh, Linux is a Linux based open source operating system may be used for cybersecurity and analysis and uh, digital forensics. It was installed on the Raspberry Pi for uh, this attack. The HCX dump tool captures, is a software that captures WLAN uh, packets we can use that, like the captured packets. To we we do we take the captured packets and feed it to the HCX HCX PCA tool, which is another piece of software that basically converts the captured network into hashcat compatible file. The hashcat is another tool that basically supports different modes of attack on uh, hash, uh, hash files. So we use the hashcat to do like a brute force attack on uh, our converted hash file. The first step in uh, this process is setting the Wi Fi adapter to monitor mode. To do this, we just basically put the run this command, sudo admin, stuff like that, and then participate in the this stuff does this one doing one monitor mode. The next step is to listen over the network for the uh, EAPOL frame so that 
uh, we can get the information we need. This step involves just waiting and listening and depending on the signal strength and how close you are to the router and how strong or how sensitive your Wi-Fi card is, it could take a while. Um, uh, but we were successful in getting the frame that we, for the target network. And then after that, uh, when you run this command, you can strip the frame of everything that we don't need and put the, the uh, password hashes in a uh, Hashcat compatible file, which we then run uh, using Hashcat. We compare 10,000 different pass common passwords and we hash them and compare the, the hash of the or test password versus the hash we got from the frame. And when we find a match, we know that that's the password of the target network. And in this case, we did find uh, we did find the password for the network, which was it begins, as you can see in the slide. So we were successful in our attack against the target network. There are possible modifications that can be made to this attack, one of which is to target a specific network. You can do this by first creating a file with the VHS ID of the target network and naming that file target. Then the command in step two of the attack can be changed to the following. In comparison with previous WPA2 attacks, the PMKID attack has many improvements. First, uh, regular users are no longer required at any of the stages for a successful attack. This is a clientless attack wherein the attacker directly communicates with the AP. There's also no longer a need to wait for a complete four-way authentication handshake between the regular user and the AP since the attack is performed on a single epoch frame. There's no more lost epoch frames when the regular user or the AP is too far away from the attacker. And finally, the information gathered is translated into regular hex encoded strings, which means that no special translation or output formats will stop attackers or cause delays. The PMKID attack also makes dictionary attacks easier and allows attackers to target WPA2 networks in a more stable method. There are several ways we can prevent a PMKID attack. We can disable PMKID or pick a strong password. And since the attack will not work against WPA3, as it is much uh, harder to attack because of its modern key establishment protocol, switching to WPA3 will prevent a PMKID attack. Thank you.